All right, Piss Omega Day 105, I think, back in Rear Delts. Um, today's topic is slowed controlled reps. So um, I've been seeing a lot of videos on, you know, uh, YouTube fitness sphere talking about, you know, whether you want to do really slow controlled reps or just normal speed reps or explosive or whatever. And then also I've had, you know, over the years, many times people critique my form for being too explosive or not controlled enough or... You know, even even in the recent videos, I've had a few people say that. And funnily enough, like nowadays, my form is a hell of a lot more controlled, but not super controlled. And I've experimented with super controlled slow reps. And there's, you know, there's benefits and pros and cons to everything, really. Um, and I just weigh them up. And it's also individual. Like, so with really slow reps, like say, for example, this cable row here, I'm doing a pretty controlled, good form by all standard here. It's not super slow on the negative or anything, getting more eccentric damage, quote unquote, because that's up for debate. But, you know, it's relatively controlled. Um, but in this case, you know, for example, let's say I do a four or five second, uh, you know, slow, concentric and eccentric. There are benefits. The, the main benefits for that, those slow tempo reps is one injury prevention, you're less likely to get injured because the, the torque on the joints uh, isn't as prevalent but for me you know I'm, I'm a relatively seasoned lifter um and when you're natty and when you're you know bulking and you're just generally pretty used to lifting and i'm just not that injury prone in general like i have nagging little injuries but they never escalate to anything serious uh, i'm confident in you know using a bit more weight and going a bit less controlled and when i say less controlled i mean less controlled than the really ex extreme sciencey kind of lifters that you have this super slow tempo so the imp injury prevention thing sure like when you're first starting if you're a noob doing super slow reps on high intensity training is perfectly fine in fact i would suggest that and i suggest that with my clients i have clients who are only just getting into high intensity to do five second rep speeds because it is safer um, and then the next thing is that it can create more time and attention which is important for high intensity training because in high intensity training, you're only doing one set. So to get adequate time and attention, you slow the rep speed down. And that, I also agree with that. But it's the thing is you can get plenty of time and attention other ways. One is just simply not going into super low rep ranges. You know, doing eight to 12 with somewhat controlled rep ranges will get you a decent amount of time and attention. And then in my case, I do a lot of rest pauses and drop sets. So I'm getting the same amount of time and attention by just doing a bunch of drop sets and rest pauses, which is my preferred way of training. Um, another thing that it has benefits for is, you know, time poor guys who just want to do full body. So in that case, you can only do one or two exercises per body part. You can't do a bunch of accessories and you're trying to just get the time. You're just trying to be in the gym in and out. So in which case you choose a super bang for the buck exercise for a given body part and you do super slow, uh, speed and that's fine too. Um, but for me, that's, I've got time to, to do, you know, natural bodybuilding split. Um, also the issue with it is, I mean, an issue, not necessarily an issue. If you're not too worried about strength, then slow rep speeds are fine, but it's harder to lift, you know, really heavy fun weights when you're doing these super slow controlled reps. Part of what I do in training is to have fun. Even if, even if what I'm doing, let's just say, you know, not doing super slow rep speed isn't optimal. Not maybe I'm missing one or two percentage of the gains due to this, you know, less rep speed, which I'll argue in a second why I'm not. The fact that I'm bored out of my skull doing these slow reps and these slow reps make it harder to mentally get intense, which is a very big part of high intensity training, then hinders my workout. So I'm not having as much fun. I'm not getting as intense. So um, that's another thing. Uh, it depends on the exercise too. Like there's a time and place. Um, there are some exercises where I go much more controlled and slow. Like my calf raises, for example, I go super slow on calf raises because it just that's how it, wor it works better for me to do it that way. Um, whereas the next exercise you'll see is the perfect example of the absolute opposite of slow and controlled. The next exercise after, after this one is my you know unilateral um, unilateral row where I'm really just worrying about a stretch overload in the muscles. I'm kind of trying to get a huge overwhelming stretch reflex in my rhomboids. Because the rhomboids and traps and scapula, you know, retraction, de decompression, compression muscles are very much trained through stretch. So doing this movement I'm about to do, super slow and controlled, isn't going to target the rhomboids. It would only end up targeting my lats. So 
in the case of doing this one really slow and controlled, it would do me no favors at all. And it wouldn't allow for a great contraction at the top. When you do these heavy weights with cheap form, you can get a far better contraction because you're squeezing really hard with a bunch of weight at the top and then you're doing a huge stretch at the bottom. I've never felt DOMS or gotten more growth from any other exercise than this specific variation in my rhomboids ever. So in this case, slow reps would be a fucking terrible idea. Um, another thing is, you know, there's too many things to focus on or in, in when you're slowing the rep speeds down so much and then you have to standardize it because otherwise you'll, you'll progress and regress weight week to week. And this was one of the issues with slow reps for, with me previously is I was, you know, I'd do five second up, five second down and then I'd be like, well, sometimes I'm doing four seconds and like three seconds down and then other reps I'm not and all of a sudden one week I'm getting stronger and another week I'm getting weaker based off the fact that I'm sometimes forgetting to slow my rep speed down to the exact speed every single time which then stops me from really focusing my contraction stops me thinking about how many reps I'm doing and really the contraction and, and, and the intensity of focus goes away because I'm thinking about the timing I'm like counting one, two, three on my negative which is fucking annoying dude and it takes away from the intensity. And again, there are times and places for those slow negatives. I do them on certain exercises like accessory movements where strength doesn't matter so much. But on say a heavy incline dumbbell press where I'm really trying to focus on getting strong, um, slowing, the, slowing the negative down makes it more boring. And then also I have to then think about the, the ex having the negative an exact amount of time. Otherwise, one week will feel stronger or weaker than the other and that's terrible for progression so it just that's another thing it adds a lot of you know thinking on top of what you're already trying to think about that i don't enjoy um i prefer slow controlled reps where i'm not really like on accessories where i'm just kind of doing slow controlled negatives but i'm not counting it you know one negative might be a bit slower or faster than the other one but it doesn't matter because the strength isn't so you know it, it doesn't matter as much quick uh quick uh digression here is i'm trying i'm trying all these different like pullover variations today i tried it with a band so that i could pull through the elbows and hands and then i tried like an underhand grip but my fucking shoulder that's so unstable when i supinate my arm and then i pull it into you know uh, lat flexion it like pinched a nerve in my fucking armpit like that's how fucking loose and fucked up my shoulders are. So I couldn't do an underhand. I had this feeling that underhand in this variation would allow me to contract the lats even better, but I couldn't do it because at a certain range of motion, my shoulder would just click and pinch a nerve and I get this like crazy radiating pain down my arm. So, but this variation felt pretty good. It allowed me to kind of pull equally through my elbows and hands. Um, and if you know anything about back training, you really try to worry, try to think about pulling through the elbows versus the hands get it closer to the kinetic chain relative to the lats. Um, anyway, back to slow reps. Um, I think I've pretty much covered everything as to why I don't always do slow controlled reps. There's a time and place for it really. That's the overall point I'm trying to make is if you're a novice or a beginner, um, certain, certain exercises are better. Uh, or, or if you're a novice and beginner, it's better to just do it overall slow at, at the start. Get, let your ligaments and tendons get conditioned enough so that when now that you're doing high intensity you you know blow a fucking you know a tendon off uh the bone or you know rupture a muscle or some shit get used to the training first and then you might start using quicker rep speeds if you do if if or not like you know you might just enjoy doing slow negatives for me i don't really enjoy them uh on, on a lot of different exercises and on some exercises they actually hinder it this is another good example is the rear delt raise if i do slow controlled rear delt raises I can't get a peak contraction at the top as well because you're doing the slow movement where there's no like acceleration which allows you to accelerate and contract because you don't really you, the the peak contraction in the rear delts is at the top and the rest of the range of motion due to the resistance curve you're not you, you're obviously obviously getting some t tension but it's not the same and i just don't feel the muscles work anywhere as much as when i go faster also certain movements like for example, these these rear delt raises, if I go slow, I get pain in my shoulders, my rotator cuffs hurt, which sounds ridiculous, it sounds like a coat, but I'm, I swear to God, that's, that's how it works for me. When I go slow on certain exercises, other muscles get involved, muscles that I'm not trying to get involved, get involved, uh, rotator cuffs start hurting, uh, my traps start getting activated on this movement specifically. So again, 
some exercises absolutely so, so going slow is great half of my exercises are kind of slow and controlled but then the other half aren't so much they're either you know somewhat controlled uh not controlled at all or you know controlled negative or whatever it is but it's a it's a you know it's a gradient for me and for others it might be better and maybe i'm missing out on something and so be it if that's the case you know the, the other examples the other reasons i gave stopped me from doing it, even if it was optimal which i don't think it is for me specifically um but if it was absolutely optimal i still wouldn't do it because it's boring and it's too much to think about so yeah that's why i don't do super slow reps on every single exercise um, and some exercises, you know, I'll, I'll do kind of half cheated or, you know, not super controlled. And then on the drop set, I do really controlled reps. So it just depends. But that's kind of what my two cents on the idea of slow reps versus just standard rep speed. It depends. It absolutely just depends on the person. Anyway, see you guys tomorrow for more Piss and Vinegar. Bye-bye.